John Cairns is the guy now who shows that information can go from protein back into RNA, and now we know RNA can go back into DNA, and since the protein is reading the environment, it says that the environment can change the DNA, and this is now becoming a known fact in science as well, so that the information is now going both ways. Why is this important? Because when a normal, when we go to an OBGYN checkup, if you're, if you're pregnant, what is the doctor primarily interested in when he asks you, what questions are, are they looking for? Are you eating right? Do you have enough vitamins? Do you have enough minerals? It's like taking a dipstick and saying, you know, okay, you can grow a baby. You got all this stuff in there. And the bottom line is this. The belief is this. What is the role of the mother in conventional belief? Understand this. If the child is developing from the sperm and egg with the genes, and the conventional belief is that all the programming is in the genes, then the mother doesn't provide anything but nutrition. That is why, then, in an OBGYN checkup, they're really just asking about your nutritional health. But the bottom line is this. We know this is not right anymore. We know that the environment can change the genes. So the bottom line is this. The mother is now found to be providing information that the mother is adjusting the genes of the child. But it's not the mother alone. The mother is in cohorts with the father. So as the mother's perception of life is altered, it's usually in tandem with the husband. So it's not just the mother, it's the parents are affecting the offspring in this way. That, remember, what selects the, what selects the genes? We just, remember, we talked the genes can't select themselves. What selects the genes? First, first part of the lecture. Perception. The embryo is growing in uterus. What is it perceiving? What environment does the embryo perceive? The mother, because it feeds off of the mother's blood. Cool. What does the mother's blood have in it? Of course it has nutrients in it. That's what provides the nutrition. What else does the mother's blood have in it? All the hormones and the molecules that organize her body to respond to the environment that she perceives. So guess what? The fetus is reading that. So the fetus is adjusting to the environment that the mother perceives. Why is that? Because nature is so intelligent. It said... Sperm and egg are generic. When they come together, when was it and where was it? It makes a difference if the sperm and egg come together in, in, in the middle of Africa or the middle of, of Chicago. It's, they're two different environments. The two kids are not going to adjust the same in each environment, but the kid has to adjust before it's born. So it turns out that the mother is nature's head start program. It helps the child select the genes that will be necessary for that child to survive in the environment because the child is going to live in the environment that the mother perceives. So nature has taken the ability of the mother to have perception, cross that over the placenta, and the perception of the mother now becomes the perception of the child. And as this article in Newsweek uh, last year came out and said, where health begins, obesity, cancer, and heart attacks, how your odds are set in the womb. This new understanding comes out and says exactly what I'm trying to tell you, that the genes of the child are dynamically selected in response to the perception of the mother. And why that's important, as I said, is it allows the child to immediately be adapted to that environment that the mother lives in. However, since perceptions are beliefs, and since beliefs are not necessarily accurate, then a mother's perceptions, a mother and father, remember they're in tandem, the parent's perceptions are genetically selecting, you know, or, or genetic selection mechanisms for the child. Parents are genetic engineers. They're selecting genes. How is this child going to respond? Well, listen, think about it before I even show the slides. In a protection system, uh, well, I already screwed that question up. I was going to say, which system would you activate? The protection system. <laughs> and the answer is specifically this. In an environment that's threatening, perception system is activated, or protection is activated. In a supportive environment, growth is activated. Here's the truth before I show the slides because it's going to be really great. In an embryo, the organs and tissues that develop develop in re relationship to the amount of blood they receive. The more blood they receive, the more better their development. Simple, obvious nourishment growth process. Well, look at this slide. In mice, mom's genes favor brains over brawn. I'm going to illustrate these two genetically identical mice in the next slide. But the relevance about it is this. As I said, these are genetically identical, but they're grown under two different environments. And the significance is this. They don't look the same anymore. They're not like clones of each other. What's different? Well, can you guess which one is the protection one and which is the growth, which was grown in, in a protection environment and which is grown in growth environment? Can you, can you guess? The one on the right is grown in a protection environment. Okay? Why? 
Think about this. Let's go back. Remember HPA axis? When a stress response happens, where does the blood preferentially go? From the viscera to, to the arms and legs. Look at the body on this one. Look at the body on this one. So the point was, in a stressful environment, more blood went to the muscles of this individual. Why? Because this, this baby is getting ready to come out, fight or flight, man. It's getting ready to go. Okay, now the other thing is this. You can't see anything about the immune system, but remember I talked about the brain? I said, what happens under stress in the brain? And the answer? The hindbrain gets more flow of blood and the forebrain gets squeezed. Look at the difference. You can see the forebrain as this dark structure above my hand right here. The forebrain in this one starts on the right and goes all the way back to the left. The difference in the brain, 50% of the brain is, is gone in mass. Why? Because the hindbrain is developed. Look at the big bulge sticking above my hand. That's the hindbrain. What's the function of this? This is an athlete. <laughs> what is this? This mouse is a mouth athlete. Why? It's got great muscles. It's got great reflexes. But it's a little short on the intelligence. And it turns out, a fact, 40 to 50% of a child's IQ potential is determined by the prenatal environment. This paper is illustrating that. It says in the uh, subtitle, the uh, genetic heritability of IQ remains highly contentious. A new analysis shows that genetic influences may be weaker and prenatal environmental influence is greater than previously appreciated. It's based on a paper that reveals 40 to 50% of the potential IQ of a child as a variable based on the perception of the mother during pregnancy. And that says, look at the way we raise kids today. Look at parents in inner city situations. Look at parents that are single parents that don't know whether they'll be able to provide for their child and for themselves. These parents live under high stress. When they live under high stress, the stress hormones cross the placenta and impact the child, selecting genes which alter the development and evolution of that child, as you saw in the Newsweek article, that it can select genes that lead to cancer, cardiovascular disease, obesity, are all been linked now to prenatal environmental influences. The role of the parent is highly important in the evolution of humans on this planet. It's called conscious parenting. Because when we're unconscious, we create athletes or fight street fighters. Street fighters is what ultimately they become. They live not off of brains, they live off of brawn. And we live in, in a world that we are experiencing lesser intelligence in the population year after year after year. The down dumbing of America. One of the main reasons, we haven't given attention to the reality that the child is being programmed genetically in utero in response to the mother's perception of the environment. This one is a very, very interesting and recent article in science, non-genomic transmission. That means transmission without genes. Non-genomic transmission across generations of maternal behavior and stress responses in the rat. And here's what it says. When a mother raises a child, that infant and from the neonate time is learning how to raise its own child that when, it, when that child grows up, it will raise the child the way it was raised. So the interesting part is when we raise a child, we're not just raising the next generation because we're also then influencing the subsequent generation because that, our child will raise their child the way we raised them. And the relevance about that is it's not genetic. And the interesting part is, then this means that we've also recognized as well, is the mother, oh, let me read the quote right off the bottom here. It says, they have shown that the environment can trigger differences in behavior and in stress-related gene expression that are passed on to the next generation. Meaning, how you live your life today will alter the genetics and behavior of your child tomorrow because you can pass this on immediately in one generation. And the significance of that is then all of a sudden the power of not recognizing that we've been doing this has to come into our lives so that we can start raising a generation that we can live with rather than a generation that may kill us in the end because of the, of the amount of aggression that we're building in and violence, which is a known part of this process right here, especially related to stress-related genes because in response to stress, violence is one of the primary ways of responding.